If you're an avid traveler, then you know that every day there's a new product or service available that seems to be the next essential item for your trip. Though we're often faced with the dilemma of packing light and avoiding unnecessary items that add to the clutter. In fact, I would argue that many of the items that are marketed as essential might not be as important as you think. Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Ernest from Trip Astute. In this video, I wanna share 12 items that I see a lot of travelers carry that I think is unnecessary. I'll also cover what you should pack instead. I have to admit that I'm often guilty of overpacking. This has only gotten worse since I started this channel, especially when it comes to all my video gear. At times, I've carried two digital cameras, accessories, and even a drone. My situation may be unique, but I also notice a lot of folks when traveling that are carrying unnecessary or cumbersome items. So today, I wanna to run through my list of unnecessary travel items or habits, and also share what I think you should carry or do instead. But before we get started, if you're new here, welcome to our channel. TripSuit is a travel channel that is focused on sharing ways to make travel easier, affordable, and more enjoyable. Traveling can be stressful and expensive, so we're looking for ways to help you maximize your experience through travel tips, points of miles, and innovative gear. If that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. So let's jump straight into my list of things you don't need when traveling. A lot of what I recommend in this video has been covered by other videos as well, so I'll include links to them in the video description. Number one, power converters. I get a lot of questions from folks asking whether they should invest in a power converter before their trip. The short answer is no. For most people, a power converter is completely unnecessary and bulky. Since most devices like electronics accept a wide range of voltage or frequencies, all you really need is a cheap adapter since your device should be able to accept the local power. Now there are some cases where you might need a power converter, especially if you're packing a personal care appliance like a hair dryer or iron. The best way is to check your chargers to see what they are able to accept. You'll usually find it in the fine print on the chargers. And if your device doesn't take a wide range of power, it might make more sense to find that device at your destination rather than investing in a heavy and clunky power converter. For more information, check out our video on the topic. The video is from 2017 and it's one of my earlier videos, so the editing is a bit rough. Though the content is still relevant, I just can't bring myself to watch my older videos since they look so unpolished. Number two, multiple chargers. Carrying a separate charger for your phone, tablet, earphones, and whatever else you're carrying can be cumbersome. Sometimes it's unavoidable too, especially if you have a laptop with its own proprietary charger. However, I'm a fan of consolidating as much as possible, especially with chargers that have multiple USB ports. There are a ton of brands out there. If you're looking for a brand that I recommend, I've had some great experiences with Anchor. These devices not only allow you to save space, but can often charge your devices faster than the traditional USB charger. Number three, laundry lines. When I traveled through Europe on my own about eight years ago, I was determined to do my own laundry along the way. I got the idea from other backpacker blogs that I was reading at the time. I brought laundry detergent packets and a laundry line, thinking I would end the day washing my clothes in the sink or bathtub, then hanging them in my room. While it's doable, I don't think it's a good use of time and energy, especially when you're on vacation. I think it's better to ask your hotel if they offer laundry service or even finding a laundry place in the area that you're visiting. In some places like in Southeast Asia or Central America, it only costs a few dollars per load and can save you so much time. Plus, you don't have to worry about packing wet clothes that didn't dry up in time. Number four, heavy coat. If you're traveling to a place with cold weather, then you've likely found that a heavy coat takes up a significant amount of space in your luggage. You definitely want to stay warm and comfortable, so I recommend getting a compressible jacket made of real or synthetic down material. For example, this jacket from REI is perhaps the warmest jacket that I own and also the lightest. It can also be compressed, making it easy to fit in my luggage. The other option is to wear your heavy coat on the plane. Since I live in LA, this is usually not a good option for me and I dislike carrying loose items on the plane since I tend to forget about them when I'm deboarding the plane. Number five, passport covers. I see a lot of people using passport covers when traveling. While I think they look cool, I think a more useful item is a passport organizer or wallet. These type of organizers, like this one from Zero G, allows me to pack some backup credit cards, currency, and even plane tickets. It also has a pen, which is so useful when filling out customs and immigration forms. Number six, travel books. This one might be a bit controversial. I love travel books, but I think they're often a bit cumbersome to carry, especially if you're traveling to several places and carrying multiple books. I recommend seeing if you can carry the ebook version when traveling. We did a whole video on how to get free ebooks and audiobooks from your public library using the Libby app. For more information on the topic, check out that video. Number seven, RFID wallet. 
For the past 10 years, I've seen a lot of travel and wallet companies add RFID protection to their products, usually at an increased price. RFID protection is meant to stop thieves from stealing information from IDs that include the RFID chip. This includes things like contactless cards and passports. Though to be honest, I don't think that the threat of RFID is really a widespread problem. When I researched the issue several years ago, and even recently, I couldn't find any documented cases of people who had their information stolen through an RFID reader. In fact, I did a whole video on the topic several years ago. Again, it's one of my earlier videos, so don't judge me if the editing and presentation is a bit rough. Also, if you happen to have a wallet, organizer, or bag with RFID protection, don't worry about it. It doesn't hurt to have it. Though if you're presented with the option when purchasing a new item, then you can probably skip the RFID protection. In my opinion, it's a solution to a problem that doesn't quite exist, or at least not to the degree that seems to be implied. Number eight, travel backpacks. This one is also a bit controversial. I think large travel backpacks are great for those traveling to places where you might encounter unpaved or uneven roads. That's because trying to roll a bag in these places is usually an awful experience and will likely end up destroying a suitcase's wheels. On the other hand, I sometimes see people using a large travel backpack when I business travel in the US. While I appreciate the rugged spirit of it all, I think for most non-adventure travel, it's probably better to use a rolling suitcase. You'll not only have more optimized space for your belongings, but you'll save your back in the process. I pulled my back a few years ago when lifting a heavy backpack off the ground, and it was not a fun trip. Again, if you think you'll encounter situations where you'll be traveling with your suitcase over uneven surfaces, then a backpack is a no-brainer. But I think for most trips I've taken in the last five years, I've only used my large backpack on three trips. Every other trip was with a rolling suitcase, this is just more convenient. Number nine, camera. I feel like a bit of a hypocrite with this one, especially since I'm usually carrying a bunch of video gear when we travel, but that's because I need to collect B-roll for our videos. However, I feel like I meet a lot of people who purchase a DSLR or mirrorless camera right before a big trip. While I love new gear, I think the hassle of a large camera is not worth the effort, especially when you have a very capable photo and video camera on your smartphone. This is another topic where I did an entire video to explore the issue. And if you're someone who is an enthusiast who wants more control over your photos and videos, it makes complete sense to bring a large camera. I know my smartphone is still not the best way to capture footage, especially in low light conditions. But for everyone else, I would encourage you to save the money and use a camera that you have and are accustomed to using. You not only save money, but you have less to carry and worry about when traveling. Number 10, flashlight. When I went on a group tour to Cambodia and Vietnam, we were told to bring a flashlight, especially since we were visiting the Kuchi tunnels in Ho Chi Minh City. However, a flashlight can take up room and add weight to your pack. For most people, you can probably get away with using the flashlight function on your smartphone. And if you're actually planning to explore caves or tunnels, then I recommend carrying a headlight instead. It's not only smaller and lighter, but it's much more useful since it frees up your hands. Number 11, money belt. I'm not a big fan of money belts. I know some people swear by them, but I find them to be awkward to use. I just think that there are better options out there that are more comfortable and effective. That being said, I think most people can get away with a wallet in your front pocket. You're still susceptible to pickpockets, so it doesn't mean that you don't need to remain vigilant. But for me, I carry my front pocket wallet every day, so I'm more accustomed to using it and also noticing when it's not there. And for women, I recommend carrying a purse with zippers rather than just a flap. On that note, number 12, cash. Getting cash for your destination before your trip is something I see and hear about all the time. Though it can be difficult to do, especially if you're going to a less traveled location that has a unique currency. And you'll definitely want to avoid the currency exchange booths at the airport since the rates and fees are usually unfavorable to travelers. A better option is to get a debit card that reimburses you for ATM withdrawals. I have a Charles Schwab high yield investor checking account that doesn't charge any fees and offers a debit card that reimburses for ATM transaction fees even when traveling abroad. I'll transfer some money from my primary checking account into my Charles Schwab checking account, then use my debit card to get money from the ATM. If the card is stolen or the account is compromised, the risk is mostly confined to the account rather than my primary checking account. That way too, if the bank needs to do an investigation, I don't have to worry about my account getting locked or frozen. I also like this approach since I can use the ATM more often to retrieve smaller amounts of money rather than using the ATM once and getting a large sum of cash. I've had cash stolen twice while traveling, so I just prefer to carry less of it whenever possible. Charles Schwab isn't the only bank account out there that offers this benefit. However, I've had an account with them for years and it's worked flawlessly. If you're interested, I did a video on the account a while back. 
I go through more details on the account and also how you can earn $100 when opening an account using a referral code. I'll include a link in the video description. Also, just a reminder to avoid using your debit card for purchases when traveling. There are many reasons why a credit card is much better for this purpose. If you want to learn more, check out our video on the topic. What do you think of my list of unnecessary travel items? Are there things that you found not to be useful in your travels? Let me know in the comment section below. I've included links to some of the items mentioned in this video. TripleSuit does get a percentage if you use our link. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's an easy way to support our channel, especially if you found our content to be valuable. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If so, please give us a thumbs up and consider sharing the video with others. It may not seem like much, but it really helps us with growing our channel and community. As always, we appreciate you checking out our channel and video. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.